Hi guys, this is not a professional YouTube video. I am not a professional YouTuber and I've done this entirely on my iPhone. But I managed to get a test ride today on the um, Northern 901 uh, from Midwest Racing in Melksham in Wiltshire, uh, UK. And I thought I'd share my thoughts with you because the rest of the YouTube video seemed to be mostly from journos and people that were on the press release. So here I am. I got myself up to Melksham. A uh, very kind chap at Midwest Racing called Graham uh, let me the demo bike today. And I took it down to um, Westbury, which is just down the road, uh, up to the hill where there's a lovely place called Westbury White Horse. Um, why bother going to Stonehenge when you can go and see Westbury White Horse? Worth a visit if you're ever in the area. And it's also got a lovely byway open to all traffic up there, so I was able to ride it over a few bumps. But yeah, it's an interesting bike. Um, I'm coming to this from an old GS1150, real tractor, um, low revs, low torque, low end grunt. This is a much higher revving engine, much more power, um, very, very different delivery, um, and, and altogether a very different bike. So um, it took me a fair bit of getting used to, to, to get, um, get really dialed into the Northern 901. But first impressions, things I've noticed. Um, the seat, it's a big bike. Um, the photos don't do it justice. It's, it's quite a tall bike when you see it in person. When you look at it in the photos, you, you can't really tell how, how big it is. It could be big, it could be small, um, but it is a tall bike. I'm six foot two, and with that seat, which is apparently in the low setting or the normal setting, um, I was just quite comfortable with the balls of my feet touching the ground, not the heel. I couldn't flat foot, just the balls of my feet touching the ground, um, which is perfect for me. But again, I'm six foot two, 188 centimetres, something like that. Um, and I'm fairly chunky monkey, so um, the suspension was also pretty plush. There's a there's a little preload adjuster under the seat, but I, I found it to be firm when on the road, perfectly firm on the road, um, but really plush when you get over big bumps. It really soaks them up with that long travel suspension. Um, one of the things I did notice, and I appreciate coming from um, different bikes, you need to uh, give it a chance to dial in, is the riding position's very different on the Norden. Um, on the GS, you've, you're actually inside the bike. You're low down. You feel like you're in the bike. There's a big tank in front of you. The handlebars are high. On the Norden, it felt like my bum cheeks were being pushed up. So it feels like you, the pegs are quite high. The seat pushes you up. And then you're sort of looking down on the bike. I guess the handlebars are reasonably low. Um, and that, that made for a great riding position, but it took a bit of getting used to. And the other thing I noticed is if you stand up on the pegs and try and off-road it across some, this was just a gravel track, um, the handlebars in the stock position are very low. So you, I couldn't stand up um, on the bike because the handlebars were too low, the pegs were too high. You would need to put some risers on it or change those handlebars to um, to be able to stand up and, and truly off-road. So I'm not sure how it was configured when these journos took it out on the press release, but I'm six foot two, I couldn't stand up on the bike and reach the handlebars. So bear that in mind. Um, another interesting thing might be a pet hate. Um, I found that indicator switch to be very, very um, protruded, I suppose. I'm, but then again, I'm coming from an old BMW. It's got the nice, easy, whether you like them or hate them, it's got the old BMW style indicator switches where you've got one on the left and one on the right and a cancel. Um, they're dead easy to use, easy to use in gloves. I found it a bit of a, a bit of a challenge to um, to find that indicator switch or that indicator button uh, in the first few minutes of the ride, but I did get used to it by the end of the end of the ride. That might be more me coming from an old BMW than any criticism of modern bikes and the way that the indicators work. Um, <clears throat> a few people have mentioned about the the low down um, center of gravity, you know that low slung petrol tank. Uh, I've seen a few journalists say it's not as good as the eight ninety. I couldn't honestly tell you if it is or it isn't. I don't own an 890. I've ridden one, but it seemed pretty good. But it's still a very low center of gravity bike. So trust me, coming from a, a GS 1150, which is massively top heavy, very tall bike, um, big fuel tank on the, on the top, this thing just it feels planted. Um, you could really get it over into the corners. It flicks around quickly. It's still a very low center of gravity bike. And that low center of gravity tank really, you know, whether it's as good as an 890 or not, I don't know. But it, it's still exceptional. Uh, it does give you a great ride. Um, it soaks up bumps beautifully, so as I said, it's um it's firm suspension but plush suspension. Um, if it, it's solid on the road, it's got great handling. You're up high, but that's actually quite good because you feel like you're in control of the bike at all times. It doesn't feel like a huge bike, um, although it is quite a tall bike to be stood next to. I guess it's it's nicely in the middle, um, but you are sort of you're on the bike rather than in the bike, if that makes sense. You're you, it's not a bike like a Harley where the handlebars and the the tank and everything are up in front of you and up high. You're quite high perched on top of the bike looking down, but the center of gravity is quite low, so you know you can really flick it into the corners. 
here I am at Bradfield and Avon, lovely place, um, and I just stopped to, to have a think. On my second ride, or the second part of my ride, I really felt more dialed into the bike. So it took me you know, 20 minutes to get used to the bike, um, and then after that I really progressively felt more and more into the Norden. I really started to get the Norden. Um, and it's much more about you know revving it high. The power's all at the top end. The engine braking comes when you're in the you know you're in a gear with a high rev. That's when you get the, the real control over the engine, rolling in, rolling off. So I started to learn how to ride the Northern. It's very different to to the older bikes I've been riding. Um, but my God, if you twist that throttle in almost any gear, it'll wrench your arms off and just take off. Um, and that that was really impressive. Uh, you do not need any more power than this 901 has got, I don't think. Um, I was able to overtake and smoke pretty much anything as if I was on a sports bike um, with the handling of, a, of an adventure bike. So really impressed with that. What else can I tell you? Uh, I didn't really play with the modes. It was in street mode the whole time. Um, it seems like not too bad. There's not really any buttons other than the starter on the right-hand side. So everything's on the left-hand side. Um and that, that was it, really. There's no options to talk of. I really missed having the heated grips riding out of the, sh uh, the dealership. The, the lack of accessories at the moment <clears throat> is, is a little bit disappointing because the first thing I noticed that I didn't have was the, um, the heated grips. Interestingly enough, when I got back to Midwest Racing, there were a couple of dudes with these spanking newish ten arrays, and they were test riding the Northern straight after me, uh, looking to uh, upgrade from their ten arrays. So thank you, Midwest Racing in Melksham. Uh, get, definitely go and check those guys out. They do have a demo 901. Um, yeah, ask me any questions you like. I'll try and answer them. But that's just my review from an average guy.